Anthony Marshawn Davis Jr. Nine-time All-Star, four-time All-NBA member, 2017 All-Star Game MVP, a top 75 player of all time, and a one-time NBA champion. However, before all of that, he was the top player of the 2012 NBA draft class and considered to have all-time potential coming out of Kentucky and was trusted with the keys almost immediately to be the savior of the New Orleans Hornets. As we all know, he is currently enjoying his time in the LA Lights, winning his first ever championship in his first year there and constantly competing for a championship every year well except those two infamous seasons but we don't talk about that here but Anthony Davis was meant to be the hero of New Orleans however for seven whole years of Anthony Davis's career he was potentially wasting his talents in New Orleans only making the playoffs two times watching his front office make little moves towards winning until his second half of his time there and a lot and I mean a lot of losing despite owning a all-time talent in this video I want to discuss all of the moves made during 80s time in New Orleans and just see how the New Orleans Pelicans failed to bring Anthony Davis any type of success that got him to move towards a championship contender and completely give up on the team that drafted him with the first overall pick because his time in New Orleans rarely gets talked about and I am here to note every event I can. With that being said, if you want to see more videos like these, be sure to like the video as we are now officially on the road to 100,000 subscribers. So be sure to subscribe to be a part of that and to catch more videos but as usual this will be a long one but you already know who it is roll it Speaking of the Pelicans, would you like to see them live like I did earlier in the preseason and have yourself a great NBA experience? Well, let me introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, Game Time, your outlet for the best ticket marketplace out there for sporting events in more than 60 cities across the US and Canada right from your phone. As a big time sports fan who goes to many events, I've used many different ticket apps and the problems were all the same. Whether it was a lack of deals, having problems accessing my ticket when I needed it, or knowing my view of the ticket when I am buying it. But with the Game Time app, you'll get all of that and much, much more. With Game Time, you can see all the events in your city, get an accurate seat preview second to none, and most importantly, be met with deals, whether it's sponsored directly from Game Time or zone deals for sitting in a specific area. And if you find a price lower than what's advertised, Game Time will credit you with 110% of the difference with their Game Time price guarantee. And for their main catch, you can get tickets at the last minute, an hour before the event starts, or even as the event is starting. And thanks to game time, I was able to see my first ever Clippers game in Atlanta to watch their best offensive game of the season against the Hawks and had a great time. So if you want to create some memories like I did, be sure to use my sponsor, Game Time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Alvini for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Alvini, A L V I N I, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And thanks again to Game Time for sponsoring this video, and let's get back into it. The first pick in the 2012 NBA draft. The New Orleans Hornets select Anthony Davis. This moment right here was the moment everyone in New Orleans knew that change was coming. After trading away Chris Paul less than a year ago to the Los Angeles Clippers, a player who gave them so much success and despite never leading them to a finals or conference finals, gave his all for the city of New Orleans. But his time had ended and the Hornets were lucky enough to jump for the fourth spot in the lottery to the first to obtain a new cornerstone player. Some say it was due to it being rigged, but while I don't deny that, I will let you be the decider of that. But while this pick for the Hornets would soon be met one of the biggest big men prospects of all time in Anthony Davis the six foot ten 220 pound center who dominated the college game was a defensive anchor with skills second to none and even won many awards like him being the national player of the year in his freshman season and even winning the big dance with the Kentucky Wildcats so as the obvious choice at the number one pick it was up to the Hornets to make the most out of him and make him the reason the city of New Orleans can finally become a city of champions in the NBA with time already though the the Hornets would go on and plan for Anthony Davis's future, only the 10th pick of that same draft class, and what better to match your all-time center with than a point guard who can be his partner for the future. With the 10th pick in the 2012 NBA draft, 
the New Orleans Hornets select Austin Rivers from Duke University. Already thinking about the future of their all-time product in Anthony Davis, the GM at the time, Del Demps, decided to draft a highly rated point guard in the draft process, Austin Rivers from Duke. Just like how AD was considered to be the next big big man, Austin Rivers out of high school was the third best product out of the 2011 class, went to Duke as a five-star recruit, and had a season to remember at Duke where he was the top scorer of his team and had many highlight-worthy moments. So people thought he could bring the same production and develop to become even even better at the next level as a top duo with Anthony Davis. And a lot of people saw the potential in their future duo of the defensive monster Davis and an offensive heavy Rivers. And with this new era of Hornets basketball coming, the front office were already trying to make moves to surround Davis with talent. On July 11, 2012, the Hornets would trade Gustavo Ayon, a rookie from the year before, to the Orlando Magic for the services of Ryan Anderson, the reigning most improved player from the 2012 season. One of the money great moves that will start off the AD tenure, Ryan Anderson has proven himself as one of the best stretch bigs in the NBA and averaged a career high 16 points in his final year in Orlando and wanted to get paid. But obviously the magic in him were at a stalemate with this new deal. So he agreed on a sign and trade deal with the Hornets. So now that would bring AD his power forward for the future. that would be space in the floor for him to operate as the new centerpiece and center funny enough for this Pelicans team. But remember the Hornets at this time had youth all over that'll be operating as future pillars for this New Orleans squad with AD as the nucleus. Eric Gordon at the time was 23 and was just traded recently to the Hornets during the Chris Paul trade and has already proven himself to be a consistent 20 point per game score. Grievous Vasquez was traded a year ago and in his second season he has shown himself to be an eight-year playmaker despite playing mostly off the bench and they also would trade for Robin Lopez in the summer ready for a fresh start after his time in Phoenix. This Hornets team has potential all around and just needed to figure out how they go about developing Anthony Davis and finding the right pieces to make them a great team, whether via trade or in the draft. But now we can start the 2012-13 NBA season. The Hornets are coached by Monty Williams and his job is to see how he can make the most out of AD's first ever NBA season. Off the bat in his debut, he'd already show what he can do long-term, scoring 21 points, drawing nine free throw attempts, and of course, getting a steal and a block. And this was against the San Antonio Spurs, who was in the conference finals last year and still own one of the best power forwards of all time, Tim Duncan. But while we start off on this positive note, one of the major hits to his career overall would already get him as soon as his career started as he suffered a concussion in only his second game ever and soon after fracturing his hand that sidelined him for seven games. As you all know, this isn't the injuries that he has nowadays, but we'll get into his first major incident later. Overall, Anthony Davis' rookie season was everything everybody expected of him and then some. It didn't take AD long enough to learn how to score on the NBA level and become a defensive menace. He had many key games in this first season that showed his full skill set, blocking five shots in his third ever game in his career against the Charlotte Bobcats, and scoring a season-high 28 points in his sixth ever game against the Milwaukee Bucks. But again, we see another glimpse of his future as he'd have a stretch reaction to his ankle that kept him out for 11 games. As we all know, when you are a near seven-footer, lower body injuries can be a death sentence to your career. This is his rookie season, but considering how many he would end up getting later in his career, it sucks to see that started off even this early in his career. But let's start talking about all that. In any of these rookie season, we see Anthony Davis be used similar to how he was used in his lone college season offensively. More of a pick and roll threat and less of a post threat as he'd still have to work on that as he develops. He was never known as a consistent threat on the block in his time in Kentucky, more using his length and finishing moves to get points alongside of his ability to space the floor. Due to that, we see Eric Gordon and Ryan Anderson, the more experienced scorers on the team, taking the role as the main threat, while AD will be the fourth in command. Overall, we see Anthony Davis have a rookie season where he put up 13 points, grabbing a team high 8.2 boards a game, and blocking a team high 1.8 blocks per game. And that would make him 11th in the NBA in blocks per game and 15th in total blocks, which is pretty impressive for a rookie, and you knew it would only get better the bigger he gets and the more he plays. However, despite this season, he would only be runner-up of the Rookie of the Year race, losing to Damian Lillard in a unanimous fashion. But it was deserved. Did you watch rookie Damian Lillard? But this would 
would only be one award there are plenty of others to win overall the hornets knew what they had a future star in the making but it'll be a work in progress already we have a defensive anchor who can be a top scorer in the league with time and he has his teammates who can score with them in the future to help him out and with a record of 27 and 55 the hornets are in prime position to get a new teammate to help ad as he gets better and with the hornets front office seeing what they have potentially they went to work to make something happen as soon as possible in the summer of 2013, the now Pelicans, after the rebrand, were thinking of making a splash to add to an already exciting young team full of potential and wanted to keep adding more pieces to take them to the promised land even faster. But first comes the 2013 NBA Draft, where the Pelicans had a prime time spot as the six selectors of the class. But as we all know, the class, even by experts, were considered very much underwhelming and not with a lot of upside. And with the Pelicans front office knowing that, they decided to take advantage of an unlikely lucky team looking to barter with the sixth pick in the 2013 nba draft the new orleans pelicans select nerlens noel from the university of kentucky with the sixth overall pick of the 2013 nba draft class the pelicans select big man nerlens noel who was thought to be the undisputed number one overall pick of the class and with his jaw dropping 4.4 blocks a game that ranked him first in the ncaa in blocks per game and his 2.1 steals per game and 24 games played it showed him to be the next offensive menace in the league with his active hands. Matching him up with Anthony Davis would create a day one defensive core that would disturb anyone daring to drive in. But due to a knee injury that he suffered in college, he would fall down on draft boards as you saw with him going number six. But of course, as we all know with knee injuries, that can be fixed. However, the Philadelphia 76ers wanted to go in a new direction and wanted to start their process era and wanted to trade their pick in 2009, Drew Holiday, who they just signed to a four year for $41 million rookie extension. And with the one-time All-Star being available for trade, the Pelicans saw the new guard of the future right in front of them and jumped at the opportunity. So it was done. On July 12th, 2013, the New Orleans Pelicans traded New Orleans Noel in a top five 2014 first round pick protected deal for Drew Holiday and Pierre Jackson. And both sides got what they wanted. One got a big man with potential to be a DPOI winner and anchor of their new era, and the other one speeds up their rebuild with a point guard who became an all-star in his fourth year and has plenty of potential to keep improving, while also adding another piece to the future with Anthony Davis as the leader. But what if I told you it doesn't even stop there? Dell Demps was in the office making moves to speed along this process even more, and it was for another budding star in the making who needed a new home. On July 10th, 2013, a couple of days before the Drew Holiday trade, the Pelicans will be a part of a three-team deal with the Kings and Trailblazers, where they send away Robin Lopez and Grievous Vasquez to receive back Tyreek Evans and return. Turn. Again, taking advantage of another team trying to downsize. If you watch my timeline on the Sacramento Kings at the time, you know that there was always something going on in the aspect of a new coach or even front office members for the Sacramento Kings. And in this case, the coach there made Tyreek Evans an afterthought on the team and Tyreek lost his value due to it. So he was viewed as expendable and ended up in New Orleans. But this can be viewed as a cheap deal for someone who had such high expectations after a very historic rookie season. He just simply needed needs that new sense of scenery and needs to be put back at the position he started his time in the NBA playing point guard and not off the ball. So in the span of only a few days, the Pelicans front office have traded for their next backcourt of the future for AD to develop alongside of and compete with. And considering that Austin Rivers rookie season was far from impressive, if he ever improves, that would just be a plus when it came to death. And as they started the 2013-14 NBA season, the talks around the league of the Pelicans being a dark horse playoff team at the end of the conference started to rumble. A second year AD coming in, gaining 15 pounds, and now becoming less lanky and more tough in the NBA game. The new backcourt in New Orleans with Tyreek starting the season off the bench gives the Pelicans more reliable scoring and defense. And of course, Eric Gordon still being the 20 point per game threat, he always is. The Pelicans could potentially make some noise around the league as a young and hungry team. And with this new team and development, you'd see AD reach new heights as a player, becoming the youngest player to ever get a 25 point, 15 rebound game in his second game of the season against the Magic. In the next game, blocking six shots and stealing the ball six times while scoring 25 points, making him the fifth ever player to do that, beating the Charlotte Bobcats. Soon after, he scored a career 
career high 32 points grab 12 boards and again block six shots making him the youngest player to ever put up a stat line of that magnitude the start of the 2013-14 nba season for ad was a jump rarely seen from young players going from his numbers last year to now averaging 20 11 and four blocks per game so early in this season however due to a charging foul attempt trying to catch amari stoudemire off guard he fractured his left hand again that would leave him sideline for seven games but before the injury ad legit looked like it was his league to take over with another leap in this game now learning how to score at the nba level and becoming that defensive threat he was at kentucky with his added strength and defensive iq and it was leading to winning basketball earning a record before the injury of eight and eight at the time there were still some kinks to figure out of the roster but there were some obvious leaders of that roster that were meant to stick around but as the season progressed ad would find himself garnering more accolades and finding himself compared to more and more hall of fame worthy talent up until the all-star break though where he was not selected as one but due to a kobe bryant injury would replace the mamba and make his first ever all-star game selection but while ad would see all this success his team would start to crumble little by little causing the season to end up being a wash. Ryan Anderson, the most improved player from a couple seasons ago, would be sidelined after running into Boston Celtics forward Jared Wallace. That gave him two herniated discs in his neck and would cause him to miss the rest of the season for surgery. And Drew Holiday only lasted 34 games himself that year due to a stretch fracture in his tibia. So right there, you have two starters gone from the lineup where you are trying to cultivate something. And considering that you don't own your own pick unless it goes top five in the draft, very low chance of, by the way, the season ends up being a waste of sorts even with the development of ad taken off speaking of anthony davis let's just finish off what he was able to accomplish in only his second season ad ended up averaging 20 points 10 rebounds and leading the nba with 2.8 blocks per game you heard that right anthony davis led the nba in blocks per game and despite missing 16 games that year was third and total blocks his defensive presence was second to none and he made the pelicans a team not to be messed with defensively however as soon as he got off the court uh well we'll talk about that later but he was also top 10 in rebounding top 15 in points per game and ended the year third and most improved player voting and eighth in dpoy voting individually speaking ad was a one-man wrecking crew both on offense and defense but all around this team still had some work to be done ending the year 34 and 48 with a nice 12 spot in the west the next step for the pelicans is giving them some type of identity of some kind this may be ad's team but there's no consistent threat to them that'll make teams go about making a strategy to beat them that isn't just contain ad then profit with them ranking 13th in offensive efficiency and somehow being 27th in defensive rating despite owning ad there's a problem on that team that needs to be addressed because thinking ad can solve every defensive issue isn't the way to go something has to change for this to be a great team and to make the playoffs for the first time in ad's career and for the first time for new orleans since the season cp3 era and without their first round pick this year in a very good draft class how will dell demps and the pelicans mix things up going into next season or will they simply run it back and hope for the best as mentioned before, the New Orleans Pelicans are being very aggressive in the manner of trying to give Anthony Davis a core of players that'll stick around for the future and being so aggressive that they even traded their 2014 class pick for the services of Drew Holiday. So with that move, they missed out on the amazing 2014 class where they could have got the 10th pick and would have selected a good group of players that are still producing today, whether that is Zach Levine, Yusuf Nurkic, TJ Warren before the injury, and others. But you still gotta be content having Drew Holiday, waiting for him to blossom back into being an all-star level player but even without a first round pick the pelicans stayed busy in the offseason trying to fix some of their problems from the year before and solidify their team into a playoff roster only a few days after the draft on july 15th the pelicans will once again make a deal with the devil trading another first round pick this time in a 2015 draft class with alonzo g and scotty hopkins to the houston rockets for the services of amir asik and omri caspi in a three-team deal while omri would be soon after waves the main prize they wanted was omir asik who the season before despite being injured was one of the best rebounders in the nba at the time and a real shot blocking threat that can be the center of the future for anthony davis because if you were watching 80s early years you knew that ad centers were just not it whether it was jason smith alexis ajinka or ryan anderson ad has never had a decent center who can hold their own as a defender so now omir is here to hold his own grab his own boards and block shots so 
AD doesn't have to be the only option and the only last line of defense. But trading a first round pick for him and also considering that Omir is on an expiring deal, there is a lot of risk in this trade, trading parts of the future for what can only be described as a role player. But with a very quiet offseason outside of this trade, the Pelicans are looking to go even further than when they did last year. And with a day one lineup of Drew Holiday, Tyreek Evans, Eric Gordon, AD, and Amir Sick, to be honest with you, that sounds like a playoff team. But remember, during this time in the Western Conference, you had 50 win teams being six and seven seeds. The Western Conference was brutal during the 2010s. So your goal is to either win 50 games, bare minimum, or be lucky enough to win enough games to be the eighth seed in the wild, wild, wild west. But in the first game of the season, AD started things hot like he'd never left. 26 points, 17 rebounds, three steals, and nine blocks. AD was looking to make another jump and show the NBA that this is his league to own and desperately trying to make his first ever playoff appearance. And this season for AD and the Pelicans would be a season to remember whether it was his game winner against the championship winning Spurs from last season early in the year. Evans. Davis. Scoring a career-high 43 points against the Jazz on November 22nd, or possibly the most important shot of the season where he made a game-winning three against the OKC Thunder where he dropped 41 points. For Anthony Davis. Kid's got some game. Yes, he does. <laughs> a pump fake three from 35 feet. Every great Anthony Davis performance was a very necessary one to keep the Pelicans head above water and survive a very bloated Western Conference when it came to talent and standing. But even after that game winner, the Pelicans were still fairly surviving with a 27 and 23 record. But Dell Demps in the front office knew this team was a few pieces away from being something in this league. They were trying to make that happen as soon as possible. So now we have another trade. Earlier in the year, they traded away their 2012 first round pick in Austin Rivers, leaving a huge hole in their backup point guard spot. And the Pelicans decided to fill that hole with a trade that brought in Norris Cole for the Miami Heat in a three-team deal where they only had to give up John Salmons. Of course, this is also the deal that brought the Heat Goran Dragic, but we're focusing on the Pelicans here. After that trade, we finally move into the 2015 All-Star break, where Anthony Davis is voted in as the Western Conference All-Star starting center, making his first ever All-Star game without the injury clause from last year. However, just like Kobe, ironically, for the year before, he would also miss the game due to an injury to his shoulder. But again, this is another big milestone for him and the Pelicans, making it known that they own a top player in the conference and in the NBA itself. But even with this great season individually, the Pelicans are still trying to stay in the race for the eighth seed because while they are over 500 at this time, the Western Conference stays the Western Conference, meaning that barely having a 500 record means you're at the bottom of the playoff race race and their opponent to beat was the Oklahoma City Thunder who are without Kevin Durant due to him having foot surgery and the Pelicans would need to play their best to avoid being jumped by a very hungry Russell Westbrook and the OKC Thunder. Anthony Davis would take charge and put up more ridiculous stat lines throughout the season and winning games at the same time. But the most important game of the season came down to their last game of the season because the Oklahoma City Thunder had been keeping up with the Pelicans game after game and ended the season beating the Minnesota Timberwolves 113 to 138. So with the Thunder winning it, it means the Pelicans and Thunder would end up having the same record 45 and 37 to tie the season. But if the Pelicans win their final game, well, that means that they own the tiebreaker, meaning the Pelicans would be in the playoffs automatically as the eighth seed if they beat the reigning champions, San Antonio Spurs. AD would have to pull off one more amazing game to beat the upcoming sixth seed in the playoffs. But despite them being the sixth seed, this is a 55-win San Antonio Spurs squad. So let me remind you that this game winner on February the 6th from Anthony Davis was most certainly the most important shot of the season. In his final game, the Pelicans would end up beating the Spurs 108 to 103 with AD leading all scores to 31 points. But once the game went from 12 to 12 in the five minute mark of the first quarter, the Pelicans would never look back, gaining up to a 23 point lead at one point and watching AD score 10 points in the first quarter alone and Norris Cole, the sixth man, scoring all 13 of his points in the second quarter. Safe to say they really wanted this game and stopped the Spurs from coming back at the end. But with this win, gives the Pelicans their first ever playoff appearance in 2011 and marking AD's first ever playoff appearance 
in his career. But before we get into that, we got to talk about Anthony Davis's third ever season. He ended off the year averaging a career high 24 points per game and 10 rebounds with 2.9 blocks that once again leads the NBA for the second straight season. AD would again rise to the occasion after his last season and truly lead a team to victory night after night. And the stats and results speak for themselves. But the NBA would also notice as AD would finish fifth in MVP votes, fourth in DPOI votes, and ended the season in the all NBA. NBA first team and all NBA defensive second team. But while this team did end up winning 45 games, which would be a playoff lock immediately for a lot of teams in most cases, the Pelicans still suffered the same issues. Eighth in offensive rating, mostly carried by Anthony Davis, but also rising to the 22nd spot in defensive rating, which is simply not enough. This team can score with the best of them, but they have a real defensive problem that might cause issues in the playoffs. And who worse to be your first opponent in years of making the playoffs and in your playoff career than facing off against the first seeded Warrior squad who would score the most points per game as a team and own Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson at their peaks, which means that AD can only do so much to affect the game defensively and has to rely on his perimeter defensive guys to handle two of the best shooters in league history. And this playoff matchup, the problem I spoke of before, turns into a reality. The Pelicans will be swept by the Warriors, but losing all four games in close fashion outside of one. Stephen Curry would show himself to be the ultimate problem for the Pelicans, scoring 30 or more in three games and making 23s in total while Clay chipped in for 16 while making over 40% of them. The Pelicans were outmatched in every game, but AD really tried his best to even win one game, averaging 31 points, 11 rebounds, and three blocks per game in that series. But every time it looked like they can actually squeak out a game, Stephen Curry would come through and stomp all over that dream. But the Pelicans have learned a lot of things this year. The obvious being that AD can truly lead a team to prosperity on his own, but the brother needs some help. So now it is up to Dell Demps and the Pelicans front office to continue adding pieces to this already decent core and to take the next step in this rebuild. Of course, again, they did trade their 2015 draft pick, so now they'll have to get creative when it comes to doing this as the next season will be a crucial one. To start off the 2015 offseason, a very controversial move would be the headline of the day during the NBA playoffs. On May 12, 2015, Dell Demps would announce that Monty Williams would be fired from his head coaching position as the team would split ways from him. But the thing is, Monty had no reason to be fired in the first place. Sure, he wasn't the best head coach, but he led the Hornets to a playoff berth in his first year with CP3, stayed during the rebuild, and then brought them back to the playoffs in AD's third season. And while I was researching the reasoning for this firing, I couldn't even find a good one in the slightest outside the fact that Dell Demps was looking for a new look and the lack of defense on the team. And no one around the league liked this move as Monty is one of the most well-liked individuals in the association and also had a very close relationship with the star player, Anthony Davis. But if you want to hear how stupid this firing was, listen to this quote from ESPN. Quote, Loomis and Demps declined to cite a single problem they had with Williams. Rather, they stressed that he did a number of things well while coaching a young, injury-riddled team and that firing him was difficult on a personal and professional level. End quote. So again, safe to say this firing would be a very, very controversial one. But the man to replace Monty would be Alvin Gentry. Oh, look, he has the same first name as me. A four-time head coach and the main credit towards the success of the Golden State Warriors offense, where he was the assistant coach and, according to ESPN, the offensive coordinator of the team. And Dell Demps wanted some of that action, I am sure. So his goal is for Gentry to spread some of that magic onto the Pelicans and make them a dangerous team coming into next season. While controversial, we will just have to see if this move was worth it, and especially the decline in trust AD would have to have in the front office for getting rid of someone that he definitely enjoyed being on the team. But after a very quiet draft night because of them not owning their 2015 first round pick, the Pelicans have some people that they have to pay, and pay they did. On July 9th, 2015, Omira Sick would accept a five-year, $58 million deal, now locking in the Turkish center for a long time and paying a good bag to do it. So now he's locked in officially as the center of the future, but again, he was traded for a first round pick, so it's safe to say that he was going to be a future core member as a safe 
defensive center. They would also add in shooter Luke Babbitt, Dante Cunningham, and Kendrick Perkins to be the backup center. And lastly, the Pelicans will go on and sign AD to a max rookie extension deal with a five-year, $145 million deal. And of course, it is well-deserved as the man who can single-handedly win games on both ends. But this also stands as a ticking timer because the Pelicans have five years pretty much to make the Pelicans a championship team or he can leave for nothing at the end of it so the Pelicans are now on the clock to make that happen the goal will now be for the Pelicans to try to compound off last year and hope for some development from a now 25 year old Drew Holiday 27 year old Eric Gordon 26 year old Tyreek Evans and of course Anthony Davis but weirdly enough the way the 2016 season would start is in the worst way possible first major difference this will be ad's first ever season he primarily plays center second ad will be without drew holiday to start off the year due to leg issues that's been plaguing him since he came to new orleans and lastly tyreek evans would miss out on the beginning of the season due to getting arthroscopic surgery in the summer so that leaves ad without his starting backcourt and due to that ad would have an even rougher time trying to win anything starting off the year one and 11 but it can't be blamed on pretty much anybody but the pelicans are getting ran out of the gym and starting off the year at the bottom of the nba due to those injuries from before but over the span of the season you can see this year becoming more of a wash from all angles mostly due to injury drew holiday would only play 65 games however with a minutes restriction and not allowing to be played back to back and mostly being off the bench as he rehabbed his bum leg Eric Gordon only played 45 games, and Tyreek Evans would only survive 25 games before being out the entire year for surgery once again. So AD was truly on his own to where his second leading scorer would be Ryan Anderson scoring 17 points off the bench. Yes, you heard that right. His second leading scorer was off the bench. So yeah, you wouldn't be surprised to hear that the Pelicans would only scrape together 30 wins all year, going back down to rookie AD's Hornets level basketball. But this time, led by an all-star level Anthony Davis who made another all-star team who averaged very similar numbers for the year before with 24 points, 10 rebounds, and two blocks per game. But even AD would have to go down himself late into the season to receive left shoulder surgery due to a torn labrum. So there's really not much to say in Alvin Gentry's first season with the Pelicans and in the fourth season of this video. Because everybody was injured, everyone suffered, and and a lot of L's were gained. AD himself would still become an all-star and even missed out on all NBA status. So that in itself should tell you just how bad things were getting. So instead, here are the best moments of the season for the Pelicans. AD on January 15, 2016, would get a game winner against the Hornets. Now, the pick out top for a holiday. He's got Davis on the log! Two-point game! And AD would get his career high at this point with 59 points and grab 20 boards against the Pistons on February 21st, 2016. So what now? The Pelicans can't do much except hope for things to turn around next year and be better off. And of course, expect better health from everyone. But in exchange of this horrible season, the Pelicans will receive the sixth pick in the 2016 NBA Draft. And despite missing out on the top guys of the class, the Pelicans have a chance at making something happen and to redeem themselves after this very, very ugly season. But everyone is allowed to have, you know, one free pass, right? Because you have to give this season some grace considering all the mishaps that came in from it. But let's just hope they bounce back and pick up a rookie that'll stick around in the future and can become a potential all-star teammate with Anthony Davis. Going into the 2016 offseason, there are a lot of questions that need to be answered. But the main one is how are the Pelicans planning on improving this team? Because it's safe to say that AD doesn't have enough help to make any type of damage in the Western Conference. But in the 2016 draft, the Pelicans have a prime time spot to get an all-star level player if they play their cards right at this position. Yes, they would miss out on Ben Simmons, Brandon Ingram, and Jalen Brown, but there is always someone who can be picked outside of the top five that can produce almost immediately. But there isn't any clear holes on their team, so legit anyone can serve as a future piece of this roster. With the sixth pick in the 2016 NBA Draft, the New Orleans Pelicans select Buddy Heald from Freeport, Bahamas, and the University of Oklahoma. Buddy 
healed. What could potentially be the New Orleans Pelicans savior at this point in time. At Oklahoma, he turned himself into a premier three-point scoring artist, scoring 25 a game in his senior year and making four three-pointers a night at a over 40% clip from the three-point line, which can easily translate into a long and luxurious NBA career. And scouts loved him for that as he can immediately come into an NBA team and produce. Only problem is that scouts saw in his game, it was very one dimensional and considering he's going to go from college to the NBA he might just be a heavy volume shooter and that's about it and also adding alongside that he's on the shorter side for a shooting guard or even a small forward that could definitely be a problem but what isn't a problem is the fact that he could be utilized correctly on the right team and who better to have Buddy Heal than the team who owns the head coach credited with creating what the Golden State Warriors are now offensively. This pick had very mixed results, especially as they would miss out on Kentucky star freshman Jamal Murray, who got picked up right after Buddy. But if I had to imagine, they probably wanted to be more NBA ready Buddy, considering they are trying to go right back to the playoffs with him potentially at the lead alongside Anthony Davis. And after this draft night, it was time for the Pelicans to get aggressive in free agency as Dell Demps went all in to bring as much talent as possible. But first, before that, tragedy strikes. One of the main pillars of this rebuild so far decides to move on to greener pastures, and those people are Ryan Anderson and Eric Gordon, who both signed with the Houston Rockets to play in Mike D'Antoni's system, and most certainly having a better chance of winning a championship. So already, we are off to a terrible note, as they don't retain two pretty good scores at their positions, leaving AD with even less help than expected. So that Buddy Heald acquisition will need to yield results sooner than expected due to that. And even though money did open up on the books, the Pelicans couldn't do much in attracting people to play in New Orleans. Their main signing for the season upcoming would be Solomon Hill, Etwan Moore, Tim Frazier, and Terrence Jones. And just like that, the Pelicans' expectations are a lot lower than expected due to them not retaining Ryan and Eric for another potential playoff run. But at the same time, I don't blame them, but AD can only do so much on his own. And you can really tell he wanted to try his best towards winning something. In his first game of the season against the Nuggets, he went off for 50 points, 15 rebounds, and got five steals and four blocks. But despite that, he lost the game. Then the next game, he went off for 45 and 17 against the Warriors, and again, lost the game. In fact, the Pelicans would lose their first eight games of the season and started off the year nine and 20. There was no positivity in sight outside of the dominance that AD was trying to do and single-handedly win games for the Pelicans and outside of Drew Holiday staying consistent and finally being healthy after his constant leg issues that's been plaguing him for years. You can simply look down the roster and see that help was not on the way. Even our rookie from the 2016 class, Buddy Heald, he was having a hard time adjusting to the NBA and as predicted, only being used as a shooter, not being trusted as a starter on the team for sure, only playing 20 minutes a night. But despite all of that, there was one major positive, and that was the fact that this season would be the healthiest we would ever see Anthony Davis up until this point. However, it came with a lot of losing, unfortunately. But Anthony Davis did find himself back in the All-Star game as a starter and continuing the same play he did trying to carry his team in the season. However, this time, it would be put in the history books forever. In the 2017 All-Star Game, Anthony Davis scored 52 points in a winning effort against the Eastern Conference, which gave him the honor of being the 2017 All-Star Game MVP and breaking Wilt Chamberlain's All-Star Game scoring record. And what made it extra special was the fact that it was being done in front of his home crowd in New Orleans. But despite all this great moments so far, his team was still struggling, having a record of 23 and 34, which is far from making it back to the playoffs. The Pelicans are on the hot seat with this team. AD is a top 10, if not a top five player in this league at the time. And his second best player cannot be Drew Holiday and you expecting a championship off of it. And with that in mind, the Pelicans would finally make a huge splash and bring Anthony Davis his best teammate to this date. The Pelicans have agreed to trade Buddy Heel, Tyreek Evans, Langston Galloway, and a future first and second round pick to the Kings for DeMarcus Cousins. I'm sure you remember this. February 20th, 2017. The Sacramento Kings would trade all NBA center DeMarcus Cousins for a measly price of Buddy Heald, Tyreek Evans, Langston Galloway, and a 2017 first and second round pick. 
This trade was thought to be one of the biggest fleeces of all time, getting an all NBA level center in his prime for basically nothing in return. But it does go much deeper than that. The Kings wanted to start tanking again, and front office member Vivek Ranadive thought of Buddy Hill to have Stephen Curry potential. But at the same time, DeMarcus Cousins has an upcoming free agency deal where he could command over $200 million, and the Kings wanted to avoid that as much as possible. So now he's the Pelicans' potential problem because because he could absolutely leave for nothing if he wanted to stay in Sacktown, and now he could do the exact same thing in New Orleans. But who cares? At the moment, you have Anthony Davis and Boogie Cousins together, and they could create one of the best big man duos in NBA history. At least that's what the thought was at the time. Both all NBA level centers with Hall of Fame potential, and they just gotta learn how to play together simply, and the roster might have to be bolstered just one more little bit to be able to go back into the finals next season. But this honeymoon period of this trade made things look so good for the future and the upcoming season. Sure, they finished off the year with these two going 11 and 13, but that 11 and 13 record showed a lot of chemistry between these two. In that last stretch of the season, Boogie would fit right in with AD, averaging 24, 12, and four assists. But as the season ends, there's a lot of optimism that the Pelicans are finally in that sphere of teams who can compete in the Western Conference and beyond. Of course, it don't mean they have to get a few more extra pieces to make that happen, but with AD and Boogie being a duo, you have a lot more gravity to get some key players to sign and play down south. Overall, you see the Pelicans finish 34 and 48, but as we all know, going into next year, that record will be much better. So as the season comes to its end, the Pelicans will miss the playoffs once again. AD will be an all-NBA member in the first team and make all-defensive second team. But everyone knew around the league, this Pelicans team is going to be legit going into next year. And with a summer full of rest, and now you'll be able to get AD and Boogie together for a whole summer to create even more synergy, they can officially start competing in the NBA next year as a serious team. The summer of 2017 was going to be an awfully important few months for the future of the New Orleans Pelicans. After acquiring Darkest Cousins at the trade deadline last year, the Pelicans and Dell Demps are trying their hardest to add more productive pieces around them to make sure this team is competing for a long time. And by a long time, I mean that AD is 23 and Boogie is 26. So while they do have time, it is now win now mode and they have to get something as soon as possible to make all of these moves worth it. But with their 2017 pick being traded, the only way they can truly rely on them getting someone new was in free agency. Throughout this entire timeline, they had not been able to attract any type of high tier player or even a really good role player on their team. Every productive player was either a string of good luck or brought in via trade. And that would remain the same, unfortunately. But there was one name that had people surprised that he would even touch the state of Louisiana. That person was Rajon Rondo, the 30-year-old point guard and the one-time NBA champion. At this point of his career, Rajon Rondo was on a really bad streak of the media trashing his appearance due to his actions on and off the court. But while he's still a productive playmaking god he always is, he also comes with a lot of bad juju, at least according to the media, that has gone with him from every team. Whether it was his feud with Rick Carlisle in Dallas or his power struggle in Chicago. But with a one-year $3.3 million deal on the table, Rajon Rondo became a New Orleans Pelican. Not a big name at all and thought to be a risk to others, but he's looking for redemption and this was his chance to get it. But there is also someone else who got signed and that person was Drew Holiday to a five-year, $126 million deal. Obviously, they couldn't afford to make the same mistake like what happened with Eric Gordon and Ryan Anderson, but Drew wanted to come back no matter what anyways, but at least this holds him down to stay as a pillar of this team and one of the few original teams teammates of Anthony Davis that stayed since his rookie season and a productive player at that. Outside of that, as usual, their offseason was quiet as it can be, but while researching this video, I found that the Pelicans were projected to be the ninth seed this upcoming year and missed the playoffs, according to ESPN. So while everyone believed the duo of AD and DeMarcus Cousins would be good, the experts didn't believe that they still stood a chance in the wild, wild west. So it was up to them to prove that they can subvert 
expectations. And by New Year's Day, the experts were looking to be correct in their prediction as the Pelicans couldn't find a consistent groove, being 18 and 18, 500 on the dot. But it was due to a very unexpected reason. The New Orleans Pelicans are one of the worst scoring defensive teams in the league. You'd think a team anchored by AD and even have DeMarcus Cousins and Drew Holiday there would have at least be able to make a decent defensive team at wit's end. But the way the Pelicans are playing will make that happen, playing at the fastest pace in the NBA. Rajon Rondo was orchestrating the offense with ease, playing with two primetime big men, and DeMarcus Cousins was having a career year, getting dimes, playing alongside AD. But when you also give up as many points as you score, it doesn't mean very many games will end up being very easy. But this team was very dynamic and a very fun team to watch, watching AD and DeMarcus Cousins operating the way they do and giving teams headaches, trying to figure out just how to guard two All-NBA big men in their prime. But in this season, and with this new offense, we've seen AD reach new heights once again, averaging a career high of 28 points per game, while also scoring more efficiently than ever. Thanks to him playing alongside Boogie and Rajon Rondo at the same time. The signing of Rondo and the trade for Boogie just simply made his time playing basketball that much easier, and the Pelicans were making things happen due to it. And as they start the year 9-3 and for a record of 27-23, and they would climb up the rank of the Western Conference for another potential playoff run. However, as we all know, on January 26, 2018, we see the trajectory of this season plummet right before our very eyes. Cousins misses. Oh, almost got his own rebound. Right there. In a clutch play situation trying to help the Pelicans win a game off of a free throw attempt, DeMarcus Cousins would land wrongly on his left leg and rupture his Achilles. A injury so brutal, yet he did it by simply landing on his leg wrong for a loose ball. And we all already knew what the result of that injury would be. DeMarcus Cousins would be out for the rest of the season due to it. But as we talked about before, the Kings who traded him away also knew that DeMarcus Cousins was having trouble with that same leg as he injured it in the last two seasons majorly in Sacktown. As that hustle play was just the final straw, taking him out for a whole entire season. And with that, now leaving Anthony Davis back again to how it used to be in New Orleans. AD versus the world and having to carry his team just like the years of old. However, Dell Demps wouldn't even wait around to see how this would turn out, making a trade to try to save this team only five days later. On February 1st, 2018, the Pelicans would trade Tony Allen, Omira Sick, Jameer Nelson, and a 2018 protected first round pick for the services of Nikola Miritic. Nikola Miritic was a very highly talented pickup by the Bulls who had been playing with them for a few years and turned himself into a contending piece with his ability to space the floor and score off the dribble. But he's looking to get paid after this team option kicks in the next season and that didn't align with what the Chicago Bulls wanted. And the winner of the sweepstakes that ended up getting him was the Pelicans. At least now the Pelicans can breathe easy as just like Boogie, Nikola Miritic fits in very very well and gives AD wiggle room to operate as the team's starting center. But at the same time, he opens up room for them cap space wise, getting rid of Amir's six contract, who isn't even playing on the team all that much and went from being a starting center a couple years ago to a bench warmer as soon as he got that extension a few years back. But as they start off this new era with Nicole and Miritic going into the all-star break, on a three game winning streak, the Pelicans would once again see AD become an all-star starter, having one of his best years of his young career but his team focus was to make the playoffs it just looked like the team clicked right after the all-star break the three game win streak ballooned into a 10 game winning streak lasting almost an entire month and they'd end the season 21 and 11 since they traded for nikola miritich and had a record of 48 and 34. the best of this video so far as they were only two games away from hitting the 50 win club and guess what due to the wild wild west this record would only be good for the sixth seed and losing two more games meant missing the playoffs 
once again. So that late season run was absolutely necessary for them to even be back in this position. This team's success though should be applauded all around the team though. Despite him not wanting to do it, AD would man up and play the center position night after night and once again average career best numbers having to solely be the number one scorer due to the injury of DeMarcus Cousins while making all NBA first team once again and being a part of the all defensive first team. Drew Holiday would also step up big time averaging a career high 19 points per game while giving AD much needed relief at times and even made all defensive first team for his efforts. Nikola Mirotic would mostly come off the bench to be the sixth man and he did a great job in that role scoring 14 points off the bench each one more would step up in his role averaging a career high 12 points per game and being a 40 percent three-point shooter and of course one of the few signings they made in the offseason was Jean Rondo who plays fourth in assists per game getting nearly nine assists a game while some say this team overachieved after DeMarcus Cousins went down with his injury I see a team who simply figured it out and went on a great run to barely make the playoffs overall though this team is very polarizing as the highest paced team in the NBA the third best scoring team but the second worst in opponents scoring per game but as the playoffs are about to start the New Orleans Pelicans beat their second ever opponent since the rebrand the Portland Trailblazers experts believe that this three versus six series could end up in an upset considering the matchup in the paint with Anthony Davis facing off against Yusuf Nurkic and their small ball for Al Farouk Aminu. So it was up to him to take advantage of this matchup as much as he can. Game one started off hot with the Pelicans when AD would end up scoring 35 points and held off a fourth quarter comeback, winning by only two at the end with an ending score of 95 to 97. But another key headline would be created after this first game as Damian Lillard would be locked up by Drew Holiday, shooting six of 23 from the field. We'd also see the chemistry of AD and Rajon Rondo, who always seemed to rise in the playoffs, getting 17 assists in this first game with only two turnovers. Game two would see another demolition of the Trailblazers, this time with Drew Holiday scoring a game-high 33 points and again locking up Damian Lillard on the other side. And with this 2-0 lead, the Pelicans are trying to make sure the Trailblazers have no chance of bringing this series back home. Blowing them out in Game 3, 119-102, seeing AD score 28 and the newly traded acquisition of Colin Miritich scoring 30. And finally in Game 4, AD decides to end it all, scoring a franchise record 47 points and with Drew Holiday joining him alongside, scoring Going 41 himself to end this series in a very anticlimactic sweep for some for the Blazers. From all angles, everyone did their job, and the Pelicans made it to the second round for the first time ever in AD's Pelicans career. But the Pelicans could not celebrate for long, because as they beat Damian Lillard and the Blazers, they had the unfortunate honor of facing off against the two-seeded Golden State Warriors, the first team AD would ever face in the playoffs, and one of the most dominant teams in the 2010s, and now equipped with Kevin Durant just to make things harder. And as expected, the Pelicans would struggle just like everybody else, 101 to 123 in game one for the Warriors and a five point win the next game 121 to 116 for the Warriors continuing the dominance they've been this entire playoff run but AD would try to resist the sweep scoring 33 points in game three and seeing Rajon Rondo throw 21 assists while also seeing Stephen Curry and Clay have one of their worst nights in this postseason but after a KD masterclass with him scoring 38 points in game four and the big three scoring 75 points together in game five the goal to stay Warriors would end this amazing season unfortunately losing in five games however despite this loss you can see this season excused on many aspects Boogie Cousins would be sidelined immediately tanking the season up until Nikola Miritich would be traded for and the wall that is the Golden State Warriors was thought to be impossible to climb over at this time but what is a positive is the fact that the Pelicans could simply run it back the next year AD is turning 25 next season. DeMarcus Cousins, who is looking to get paid, could still come back next year and try again after an entire offseason of healing and getting his surgery done. And they still have Miritich on contract for another season until he has to get paid. And Drew Holiday is locked in already for four more years. And you can keep around the current core that made this team a damn near 50 win team already. So as they lose this year, in theory, there is optimism that the Pelicans can remain a threat for a long time as long as they play their cards right it might not be their time yet because of the golden state warriors and other great teams in the western conference but they have plenty of time to compete as long as they keep this team together but the pelicans do have a lot of loose ends to tie up before we can truly believe that
Like I mentioned at the end of last year's section, the Pelicans have a lot of loose ends to clear up to keep this team going long term. The first two concerns being retaining Rajon Rondo and DeMarcus Cousins as they already accepted Nikola Miritich's team option. Well, first off, the Pelicans couldn't retain Rondo as he went to play for the Lakers and LeBron James on a one-year $9 million deal. So off the bat, the point guard has been taken away and quite the loss as he was one of the best playmakers in the NBA and a huge reason they did so well in the playoffs, making AD's life so much easier. But that is someone who could potentially be replaced, which is definitely crazy to say. But the more important piece to some is DeMarcus cousins but there's also trouble on that side as Dell Demps is playing hardball with DeMarcus due to his season and the injury Dell Demps was not willing to give him the max deal he wanted which would have been a five-year 177 million dollar contract instead Dell Demps the season before offered him a two-year 40 million dollar contract due to his injury history which Boogie considered disrespectful and Dell Demps kept saying that is all you're going to get from me and due to that and seeing how his value dropped around the league as it plummeted after entertaining other offers he ended up signing with the warriors unfortunately for a one-year five million dollar deal in retaliation to that disrespect around the league as he tried to get his value up by winning an easy championship at least it was thought to be with the golden state warriors and where does that leave the pelicans back to where they were before the DeMarcus Cousins deal. And that left the Pelicans front office scrambling to make something of this because considering they are New Orleans, despite them having so much money on the table, they'd have no one to use in a major to help this Pelican squad. Considering AD can now start his extension talks here, this is terrible timing to have this issue. So the front office just tried to make the most of it. Possibly their biggest free agency pickup yet would be signed on July 8, 2018 and Julius Rand the seventh pick of the 2014 draft and after having his best year in LA the Lakers still renounce his rights making him an unrestricted free agent why honestly I have no idea and I couldn't find much of an answer but I guess LeBron signing in that summer had something to do with it but having a young growing big man who could provide toughness and offensive versatility on a cheap two-year 18 million dollar deal you honestly cannot beat that they also add Jalil Okafor to be a backup, Alfred Payton, and Ian Clark. But the main issue is, can the Pelicans make it back to the playoffs, and can the Pelicans get AD to stay on the team long term? Because as his last year of his contract comes next season, AD literally has the power to leave for nothing next season and leave the Pelicans in complete disarray. But AD still has one more season to him before he makes any major decisions. But by the time a good chunk of the season was complete, the Pelicans would find themselves 17 and 21 at the start of the new year. And by the end of the month, the Pelicans would be headline news on ESPN, but not for any reason expected like a game winner from AD or a record being broken by AD. Nope. In fact, it'll be included with AD. However, it'll change the trajectory of their season and even their future. The agent for Anthony Davis has informed the New Orleans Pelicans that he has no intention of signing an extension and, as a matter of fact, has requested a trade. After six seasons with the New Orleans Hornets and the New Orleans Pelicans, Anthony Davis has officially had enough. He sees the writing on the wall and sees that the Pelicans will not give him a chance to win a championship now or even in the distant future. So in an effort to do something as soon as possible, he has requested a trade to be on a contender specifically and wants it done fast. But better this man to just leave for nothing. But again, this shows the failure of the Pelicans and how they couldn't bring any type of real contention talks ever since he's been drafted here. Their attempts were made, but never any real results coming from it, even though AD has been at the top of his game for the last three or so seasons, especially allowing pieces to leave that could have been used in an even bigger trade for an even bigger name. So AD has finally had enough. He doesn't expect anything to change and wants to leave. A move so bold that even the GM Dell Demps got fired for allowing it to happen in the first place and got replaced by former NBA GM, Danny Ferry and his job was to find that trade but with no good packages that satisfied both sides the trade deadline would pass and AD still stayed at Pelican but during this time we find the Pelicans benching AD as they try to find a trade for him to make sure he keeps his value and to not be injured but that even angered the NBA and made fans of the Pelicans turn on AD at games sitting while fully 
healthy. This was being done mainly because they owned their first round pick in this upcoming draft and wanted to tank as much as possible because you rather as well. But the NBA was threatening fines for every game AD would miss, so he had to continue playing after the All-Star break forcefully but he was on a minutes restriction playing only at most 22 minutes a game and only playing 15 out of the 31 games after the all-star break the drama behind this was made even bigger than it needed to be but both sides had reasonings of what they were doing but the season would end with the pelicans having a 33 and 49 record and the pelicans would soon trade him to the los angeles lakers in july where he had been playing ever since. But in the seven year timeline, we would see how the Pelicans would try to make the most out of the years he was there, but it was a very disappointing time in retrospect. When you own one of the best players in the 2010s and best centers of the modern era, who was known to be that at day one and not surrounding him with talent, it was obvious that he'd want to leave eventually. Only the most craziest of players of all time, like a Kevin Garnett, who want to stay in a losing situation just because he loves the organization itself. But no, a AD had enough and he wanted to go to a real contender. But some of us can understand playing in one of the smallest NBA markets out there, the possibility of anyone coming there was slim to none. And then the front office not being more aggressive in their moves also didn't help. The DeMarcus Cousins move was possibly the best one made in this entire time. But unfortunately, the injury history he had decided to come back and bite him, making that season and a half with Boogie not worth it. Add that alongside only making the playoffs twice and never getting him a good running mate until the very, very end. It made sense why AD wanted to leave for an automatic contender so he can stop wasting his time and stop wasting his youth, which ended up being the Los Angeles Lakers and LeBron James, where he'd win a championship that next year but at least it came in exchange of earning the first overall pick and getting Brandon Ingram which makes now the new era of Pelicans basketball but even that is having its own issues so let's hope the best for them in this new era but when it came back to AD in his time the management there fumbled an all-time great a perennial DPOY candidate and one of the most skillful big men in NBA history that only lasted seven years and with a very depressing ending now we can all hope for is that they don't fumble Zion Williamson as we've seen him in the news many a times and Brandon Ingram in the same way. With that being said, thanks for watching this video. Tell me who else you'd like to see me talk about having parts of their career wasted due to bad management. And until next time.